it's going, everyone? I'm Game Master Six Point, and I'm gonna be reacting to five small mistakes that changed the world by Top Trending. I haven't seen the whole thing, seen a little bit, and um, these five small mistakes really did change the world. I should say, really did change the world. I should say. I don't know why there's a nuclear explosion in the thumbnail again, like 10 dumbest mistakes of all time. Maybe someone accidentally, mistakenly, just dumped some water on control so they can launch a nuclear explosion as a small mistake, and it changed the world completely. We all know it's in history, that's it. And yeah. <laughs> Everyone who sees this comment, have, a, have an awesome day. You too, I do. <laughs> and yeah, um, here are some mistakes that's changed the course of history. Yeah, they changed the world. And yeah, there was ten tiny mistakes that's caused massive disasters by all time tens. Not gonna do that, so yeah. Anyways, people, let's get into this video. Three, two, one, play. I hope that the music isn't copyrighted. The tragic story of the sinking of the Titanic is not. What? The tragic story of the sinking of the Titanic is known by most of the entire world, especially with the help of James Cameron's blockbuster movie. But it's entirely possible that the whole incident could have been avoided had there not been a change in who the ship's second officer was. Originally, a man named David Blair was responsible for the main crew duties of the ship, including making sure all crewmen were at their correct stations of work and that they were supplied with what they needed. In fact, it was his job to present a man named Fred Fleet with binoculars, as it was Fleet's responsibility to look for icebergs while sailing. However, the Titanic quickly replaced Blair for reasons unknown and replaced him with a man named Charles Lightoller. Despite the change in employment, Blair forgot to hand over the key to a locker where the ship's binoculars were placed, meaning that Fleet had to study the waters without them. The fatal iceberg was seen too late to be avoided, and the ship historically sunk, taking 1,500 lives with it. Oh. Fleet later testified to the Senate that had he had the binoculars, he could have saved the boat from its fate. World War it that had historically sunk, taking 1,500 lives with it. Fleet later testified to the Senate that had he had the binoculars, he could have saved the boat from its fate. World War I could have been avoided entirely had the Archduke Ferdinand's chauffeur been more wary of the route he was taking. On June 28, 1914, the Archduke had managed to survive an assassination attempt on his life. Earlier in the Never day, mind. he was notified by his chauffeur that a bomb had been placed under his carriage by two mysterious men, and before it could detonate, Ferdinand and his wife were able to escape unharmed. The bomb still exploded, killing and harming other men, women, and children in the street. Oh. One of the assassins, Gabriel Principi, quickly hid in a coffee shop to escape capture and stayed there the entire day, saddened by his failure. Ferdinand, glad his life was still intact but expressing sorrow for the victims of the explosion, ordered that his chauffeur drive he and his wife to the hospital so they could visit those harmed in the explosion. The chauffeur, new to the job and still unsure of the best routes, accidentally took a left turn in the opposite direction and led Ferdinand right by the coffee shop where Gavrilo Principi had been hiding out. Astounded by his luck, Principi quickly raced outside and shot the Archduke and his wife, having succeeded in his mission and becoming the catalyst for World War I. Oh, dang. While the turnout of the American Revolutionary War is obvious to everyone, not many know just how close the Americans were to losing the war to the British. The answer? Dangerously close. In fact, there were multiple occasions in which the American armies managed not to be destroyed by seemingly sheer luck, and that seems to be the case in the last, most important battle of the Revolutionary War as well. In December of 1776, George Washington found himself with one last chance to rid his country of the violently dangerous Brits. 
He plotted that he would stage one final battle against Hessian commander Colonel John Rawl, who had previously taken over the small town of Trenton, New Jersey. The Hessians, Germans who worked for the British Army, did not expect that Washington or his troops would attempt to strike in the middle of winter, as they believed the war would be over by New Year's Day. However, as Washington and his troops crossed the Delaware River, they were spotted by a farmer who quickly raced off to John Rawl to tell him the news. But Rawl refused to see the man, as he was too caught up in celebrating the defeat of the Americans. The farmer was ordered to write down what he had seen and deliver it to a first officer. But the farmer was English, and so his note was written in English, and the first officer it was given to could not read English. The note was discarded, and the Hessians went on partying, before being beaten by Washington's platoon the next morning. Oh no, oh my god. Joseph Stalin's death has led to Joseph Stalin's death has led to a number of wild and bizarre conspiracy theories, but the truth of his passing would almost be tragic had he not been such a violently terrible and malicious leader. In his final years, Stalin began to grow increasingly paranoid that an assassination would be right around the corner. He constantly hired more bodyguards to watch his every move and gave them strict guidelines. If his bodyguards strayed from these guidelines, they themselves would be executed, no questions asked. This drew them into states of paranoia themselves, as they were so cautious not to get anything wrong or they would be killed instantly. One evening, the bodyguards noticed that Stalin had not come out of his office for the entire day. They found themselves in a predicament. If they entered his office and disturbed him, the interaction could be misconstrued as an attack on his life, and they would be killed. But if they didn't check on him, it would be possible that he would have already been assassinated, which means they would have failed in their mission, and they would be executed by the state for that failure. After a few more days, they finally entered, only to find Stalin had suffered a stroke. He died just four days later. Wow, that's so horrible. Yeah. On the evening of November 28, 1942, the story of one man's hope to get laid ended up costing the lives of over 400 people. While attending the Coconut Grove nightclub in Boston, a soldier led his date to a back corner to solicit her into a sexual encounter. Above the two was a single light bulb that illuminated their actions for the rest of the club. The soldier unscrewed the light bulb and began his makeout session with his date. A 16-year-old busboy named Stanley Tomaszewski was ordered to replace the light bulb and break up the necking session. Stanley removed the soldier and his date from the club and went to work replacing the bulb. However, because he couldn't see, the teenager lit a match and properly screwed in a new bulb before casually discarding the match in a trash can nearby. What Stanley didn't know was that the match still carried a flame, and minutes later a fire had started and climbed up the wall into the ceiling. Patrons of the nightclub began to panic as they raced to the exits to climb out. There they found a series of doors that blocked their exit due to how they were created. The main entrance and exit to the club was a revolving door, and the giant mass of people huddled against it stopped it from serving its purpose. The other doors of the club had been made to swing inward rather than outward due to the wrong hinges having been placed on the door during the club's construction. With all of the bodies pressing against the door, no one could manage to swing it outward so they could escape. The fire quickly spread, eventually destroying the nightclub and taking 492 people with it. Oh, great. No wonder. Oh. That is horrible. Looks like that these five small mistakes did actually change the world. It was a small mistake. Yeah. Is yeah, this one by all time tens? Not gonna react to that. So yeah, that's it for this reaction video. People, hope you all enjoyed it. I did too. I don't know. But yeah, so subscribe, like, share, comment. The original link of this video is in the description if you want to go check it out yourselves. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.